In this video I want to show you the latest iteration of what has become my favourite Get Me Out of Trouble kit, my lightweight carry on friendly travel essentials kit. Now as regular viewers will know I have put together a range of Get Me Out of Trouble kits over the last couple of years with each one focused around a specific use case. And examples would include my outdoor adventure kit, there's a clue in the name, my micro urban kit for day trips, my travel essentials kit for longer trips away, or say my super compact Altoids EDC kit for coat pocket carry. And if you want to explore all of these and more, then I'll put a link to my kits playlist in the description down below. And I'll also provide a clickable link at the end of this video. Okay, so the basic premise with all of these kits is to provide help and to get you out of trouble when you're out and about. So you might be heading for a flight or perhaps a day trip or a business trip or even an outdoor adventure and you grab the relevant kit and drop it in your bag and hopefully you won't need it. But if you do, you'll be glad you have it. Now my favorite travel kit is this one. This is the lightweight travel essentials kit. It was originally designed with carry on only travel in mind with the emphasis on size and weight. And I find myself grabbing this one over all my other kits, even when I'm not taking a flight because it is so compact and yet really functional. The only exception I would say is when I'm hiking or camping, when I take one of my outdoor adventure kits, of which there are two, which are very specific to a non-urban environment. Other than that, I'll generally grab this one and I've already carried this kit with me on several trips this year, both in the UK and overseas. And as usual, I'll include links to everything shown in the description down below. The pouch used here is the Maxpedition Micro. Now most of my kits use the Mini, which is the bigger of the two, but the Micro provides the discipline needed when it comes to keeping size and weight under control. Maxpedition pouches are great quality. I use them a lot for my kits and they are made from a water resistant ballistic nylon. And most importantly, they open like a book, giving clear visibility and quick access to the contents. The micro here is three and a half inches by five and a half inches, and it's about an inch and a half thick. It's equipped with a quick grab handle, a quality YKK zip and a paracord zip pull for quick and easy access. And I've added this Glow Rhino Tritium key fob so I can find it easily in the dark. And this is the sort that glows for years on its own, so it's maintenance free. Incidentally, the Glow Rhino also has a glass breaker tip built in, which does look cool, but to be honest, I don't really see how you could generate enough force to make use of it. It does though do a good job of glowing. Okay, let's run through what we have in here. Now, ordinarily I would include a multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife in just about any kit. However, if this kit is carried in my carry-on luggage on a flight and for solo overseas travel, I pretty much always travel with one bag carry-on, then I cannot carry a blade in here or in fact, most other tools. The UK CAA, which I believe has tighter restrictions than the US FAA, do not allow you to bring into the cabin a tool with a blade or shaft longer than six centimeters, at least according to the UK government website. Now, knife blades are completely prohibited. So blades in this case, I expect means something like scissors. But the implication is that you can carry a tool with a shaft or blade, as long as it's shorter than six centimeters. Well, I have to say, to me, it all seems a little bit ambiguous. One thing which is designed specifically for flight use is the Victorinox Jet Setter. Now, it is super basic in terms of features consisting of a very small, but still very useful pair of scissors and a combination tool with a bottle opener, small Phillips screwdriver, and a wire stripper, along with the usual toothpick and tweezers. And I really think Victorinox could produce something much more practical for carry-on in a bigger size to include their bigger scissors. But right now, this is all we have from them and it's better than nothing. So it is gonna go into this kit 
as a new addition. Incidentally, there's also an Alox version of the Jet Setter, which removes the toothpick and tweezers and adds a double-ended 32 gigabyte USB A and C pen drive. And that could be useful for backing up files or say for carrying some documents. I'm though going to stick with the basic model for this kit. A pry bar is a nice addition to any kit, particularly in the lack of many other tools. And new for this kit is this one from Countycom. It's a very small pry bar, come scraper and at a push screwdriver. And I'm hoping this won't be a problem for security due to the small size as this is also under six centimeters. And I've also included something else new, which I recently backed on Kickstarter. And this is the TI Spanner from Titana. Now this is also extremely small at under six centimeters and very lightweight at just 13 grams or less than half an ounce. And it's an adjustable spanner. It's also a clamp, a nail puller, and of course a bottle opener. And it also has a glass breaker can package opener on the base and it can be used as a measuring caliper. This again should be okay going through security at an airport due to the small size. And if challenged, I would simply refer to it as a clamp. Now this combination of three tools whilst being a long way from ideal does at least provide some useful practicality. But if you're not flying, you might want to change these out for something more functional like this SOG Power Paint. Although I would say this is quite heavy. Or let's say this 91 millimeter Victorinox Super Tinker. Now both of these will fit in here, but for me, when I'm not flying, I will usually be carrying a Victorinox compact in my pocket anyway. So I'll probably leave the kit just like this so I can just grab it and go without having to think about moving things about. The next few items on this side of the pouch are carried over from the previous version of this kit. So do check out that video if you want extra details. But in brief, I have here some basic meds and those are the ones I might need in a hurry. And that in this case is Imodium, Anti-Allergy and Aspirin. However, what meds you carry, if any, will be entirely down to your own personal preference and of course, medical history. Next, I have some tie wraps, really useful for on the go repairs and for obviously fastening things together. And they take up very little space or weight and I keep them tidy by storing them in a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Now cord is always useful and paracord would be too bulky for this kit. So I use a micro cord with a decent 100 pound braking strain. Again, kept tidy using some heat shrink tubing. This is a small one which I normally put in kits like this and it's a super strong magnet and this is to be used with the cord to enable you to fish out things like keys which might have been dropped into unreachable places. Then we have one of the most useful items in this kit and that is a power bank primarily used for charging your phone because if your phone battery dies when you really need it, you can find yourself in a world of trouble. Think boarding passes at the airport or e-tickets on a train. And of course, communication, information, navigation and contactless payments. It's easy to forget how much we rely on our mobiles. I've included this Nightcore NB10,000 power bank in several kits and it still offers the best power density for weight of any I've come across. And it's slim, it's tough, it's lightweight at just 150 grams or 5.3 ounces with a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity. And that's enough to charge a mobile phone at least once or the flashlight I've got in this kit several times over. And we have USB A and C outputs and a power level indicator and a low power mode for low current charging of things like earphones. Behind the power bank, I keep a couple of antimicrobial wipes. These are good for both hands and also for wiping down surfaces. And then I also have here a write in the rain notebook, and this uses waterproof paper and can be used for taking or leaving notes. And in here, I keep my emergency numbers in case I find myself without my phone 
and I also have some emergency cash and also a prepayment card. And this allows you to top this up via an app and choose from a variety of different currencies. And this can be very useful if you need access to more funds. Then I have in here the ubiquitous bullet space pen from Fisher, which has a pressurized refill and writes on all surfaces at all angles and it's compact when the cap is on and provides a full-sized writing experience when the cap is moved to the back. Now I also wanted to include some glue with this kit so I've added this tiny one gram of super glue and I didn't want to have to move things out of this kit into a liquids bag at the airport which just increases friction and whilst it is a liquid in here I think it's unlikely to be picked up by security at around one mil and the liquids issue should disappear altogether soon as airports upgrade their technology. Okay, now looking to the other half of the pouch and we have another favorite kit item, the InCharge X, which offers six charging cables in one small form factor. At one end, we have USB-A and C plugs and at the other end, we have Lightning and then we have USB-C and in the end of the lightning plug here, we have a slot which allows this to be used with the older micro USB sockets. Good for when you get caught out, but if you're regularly charging via micro USB, then I would recommend taking a dedicated short cable. So this covers all my charging requirements, even allowing me to recharge the power bank here using either USB A or C. Next is a small change. I've swapped out my folding spoon for a folding spork. Now I realize a fork may not be allowed in hand luggage on a flight, but I figured a spork would be okay. And let's face it, it's just not the same eating noodles with a spoon. As before, this is for meals on the go. It's titanium, so it's very light and it's full size when unfolded and is far superior in use and better for the environment than the disposable wood or plastic ones were offered at the takeaway. Then we have another change, this time with the flashlight or torch in this kit. And this is really an important element in my view and potentially a lifesaver when it comes to getting lost in the dark or escaping from some dodgy digs in the middle of the night. Now I've replaced the Rovivon E5 used previously, finding room for my preferred Nightcore NU25 ultralight. And it's bulkier than the Rovivon, but it is more capable. The night core here is a headlamp and I've concluded that it's more important to have your hands free in an emergency situation. Also, you might need to light your way on something like a hired scooter or a bike. Now the night core has good battery life. It charges via USB-C, it has a battery level indicator, two light sources with different beam profiles, one for spot and one for flood, three light levels and a double red light, which can also flash, which is great for use as a warning light if you find yourself traveling along a dark road at night. As far as weight goes, this is only six grams heavier than the previous Rovivon, which is about a fifth of an ounce. So there's no issue to worry about as far as the weight goes. Another new addition is this compass. Now your phone is great at telling you where you are, but if you don't have your phone, say it's been lost or stolen and you find yourself in an unfamiliar place, just knowing you're walking in the right direction can be a huge deal. And if you find yourself outdoors with no point of reference, it could become a lifesaver. And if you have a map, even a basic city map, it can really help you find your way about. This one from Quality Compass Maker Sunto is a great option. It's liquid filled on a sapphire bearing and it works really well. It also clips onto clothing or onto a watch strap and it's lightweight, compact and affordable. I have here two types of tape. These two strips on the outside are self amalgamating tape and you remove the backing and it stretches and then it adheres to itself. And this makes it great for binding things and also as a temporary fix for a leaking pipe. The other tape is Gorilla Tape or duct tape with so many uses when it comes to fixing stuff. And I've wrapped it round a blank credit card, which I've cut in half. 
I would like to include a lighter in here, but I'm short of space and I know it would need to be put in a liquids bag when flying and then it has to be carried on your person in flight. And again, I don't want the friction of having to deal with this at the airport. And considering any need to start a fire is going to be a rare emergency situation. And so I have instead resorted to a tiny ferro rod, the tortoise gear version made for the 91 millimeter Victorinox knife. And this happens to work really well with the wire stripper on the Victorinox jet setter, as you can see here. But for this to work, I'll also need some tinder. And so I've included a couple of strips from the fire strip roll, which I know lights easily from a spark and takes up no space or weight. In the back of the sleeve here, I have two Ziploc bags and these are the stiff variety with a foil back in and that makes them easy to slide in and out of the pouch without them crumpling up. This first one contains a few first aid essentials and is to help with cuts and scrapes and can be really useful if you don't have access to something more comprehensive when out and about. And in here we have an antiseptic wipe, a few plasters or band-aids of different sizes, and there's also a small dressing and some steri strips. And these will close a deeper cut when things are a bit more serious where stitches might be needed. I also keep in here a tick remover. Now my dog has picked up ticks a few times on walks, one this week in fact, and you need a remover like this to get them off. Now I've not had a tick on me, but if I did, I'd want to get it off really quickly as they can infect you with Lyme disease. And I know someone who got this recently and it can be really bad. And again, this takes up virtually no space or weight in the kit. And then in the other Ziploc bag, we have a few useful additions. We've got some earplugs, we've got a sewing kit and some water purification tablets and another kit favorite of mine, the Thin Optics Emergency Glasses. And these are super thin and very lightweight and they'll bail me out if I ever lose my glasses without which I'm really stuck. And there we have it. And I would say there's a huge amount of problem solving gear here for a kit which is so compact. So as you can see, this all fits very nicely in the Maxpedition Micro, which is not over full and is therefore easy to open and close. And it even has a little bit of extra room to spare if needed. And as for the weight, this comes in at a very manageable 450 grams or 16 ounces. And as promised, here is a playlist of all my kits to date, which includes the previous version of this one. Well, I hope that's been useful. Do let me know in the comments if you think I've missed something. And as always, thank you for watching.